I have a quick look at motion graphs now for GCSE physics and we've got two graphs here and while they look identical even down to the resolution of the scale um, they're both talking about different things. On the left hand side we have a distance time graph and here we have a speed time graph. So how we use these is um, slightly different uh, but both involve basically uh, using gradients in the areas. Now, you remember that the, from mass, the gradient of a straight line is y equals mx plus c. Now, in this case, there's no intercept because we have a, it goes through the origin, so it's just really y equals mx. And the gradient is calculated as the change in a y over the change in x. Okay, so a rise over run, some people say. Now, uh, for this graph here, the distance time graph, uh, the distance is increasing over time. So the gradient would be change in y over change in x. So that'd be the change in distance, which is 35 meters over the time, which is five seconds. So that gives us a gradient of seven. And in the same way we work out the, the numerical answer, the units can also be worked out from this as well. We've got 35 meters divided by five seconds. So we have meters divided by seconds. If you, the gradient here equals the speed, or if it's displacement time, the velocity. Uh, that's what we use those graphs for, uh, distance time, and you can see that the gradient here is zero. There's no run, uh, there's no rise to divide the run by, so there is no velocity, and that makes sense. The distance stays constant, so it's not actually moving. And then over on this side, we have a speed time graph. So the velocity is increasing, so we've gone from an initial velocity of uh, which we'll call u of zero to a final velocity of 35. And if you remember, acceleration equals the change in velocity, v minus u in this case, over time. So working out the gradient of this section here when the, the body is accelerating is uh, the change in velocity, final speed of 35 divided by zero, divided by five seconds. That's gonna give us uh, the same number, obviously, uh, 35. But in terms of the units here, we have meters per second, which would be the change in the velocity. So we changed by 35 meters per second, divided by seconds. So that would be meters per second per second, which can also be written, written as uh, this, meters per second to the power of two, or meters per second squared. Now, there is one more thing we can use this graph for. Uh, if we were to work out the area under the graph, so take this example here, we've got time on the x-axis and we've got velocity here. This rectangular shape here, okay, that is represents a certain distance because uh, distance equals speed, uh, velocity in this, uh, well, speed, velocity, uh, times time. So we have a speed of 35 and between 5 and 10 we've got 5 seconds. So 35 times 5 gives us 175 meters in this section here, which I'll label 2. Here, this section here, would be working out the area of a triangle, which is half base times height. So here we would have half times 5 times 35 so it'll be 2.5 times 35, which gives us, um, for the area 1 here, would be 87.5 metres, because that's half the base, which is here, five, um, 5 seconds, times the height, which is 35. So this triangle here uh, gives us uh, half base times height, that will be 35 times 0.5 times 5. So when we add 175 uh, to that, we get a total distance travelled in this entire graph of 262.5 metres. 
So we're going to look at a couple of example questions. So we've got a runner here and the velocity is increasing, staying the same and then decreasing. So the first thing you want to check is what kind of graph am I looking at? So the question, what was our rate of acceleration between zero and three seconds? So uh, acceleration is the final velocity, take away uh, the initial velocity. So in this case, we've got six, take away zero divided by three, giving us an acceleration of two meters per second per second. And all we've really done there is work out the gradient of this section here, which I'm labeling A. So what was the total distance traveled? So the, uh, the distance equals the area under a VT graph. Okay, so in this case here, we're going to uh, break this into separate shapes. So we're going to have another triangle here and we're going to work out area one, area two and area three. So area one, we've got half base times the height, so triangle, half times three times six would be equal to nine meters. Here we have a rectangle, so it's just uh, base times height, so we have three seconds times six meters which gives us 20 uh does it no it gives us 18. <laughs> bad maths um yeah so we've got 18 meters here and this is a triangle which is equal in size to that one so it's half times three seconds base times the height of six which gives us uh, another nine meters so the total distance traveled would be 9 meters plus 18 meters plus 9 meters, uh, which gives us a total of well, be 36 meters traveled there. Okay? Uh, the area under that graph uh, equals 36 meters. Next up, rate of acceleration between. Oh, those numbers aren't going to work. Oh, yeah, they will. Okay, so. Let's, let's answer it anyway. So question one, what's the rate of acceleration between four and 10 seconds? So there is no change in velocity. So the acceleration is equal to nothing, zero meters per second. There's no acceleration. The speed remains the same. Velocity remains the same. Uh, to calculate the total distance traveled, you would once again break it into some shapes. And you can do it any way you like, uh, but I've got two rectangles and a triangle here. So a couple, of uh, a couple of different shapes here, uh, one, two, and three, if I can remember how to count. Uh, so shape one, we've got a triangle, which is half times a base of two seconds times a change in height between four and eight. So half base times height gives us four meters traveled there. Uh, for two, we're between four and 10 seconds and a change in height, uh, so that'll give us six seconds, uh, times a change in height, change in y of four meters per second, so that gives us 24 meters. And for shape three, we've got 10, uh, 10 seconds for the base, multiplied by change in uh, velocity of four, so height of four meters per second, giving us 40 uh, meters. So the total distance traveled will be equal to 40 plus four, 44, plus uh, 24, giving us a total of 68 meters traveled in that motion. Right, last example, and this one's a bit of a weird one because it's non-linear, so it does not follow the equation y equals mx plus c it is not a straight line. So that equation doesn't really help us just now. So what we have to do is um, why, two questions to answer. Why could you not use this equation here to calculate the acceleration? And it's really because the, the rate of acceleration keeps changing. We have a velocity time graph uh, and as such, the gradient keeps changing here. So the gradient goes from very, very positive to slightly less positive 
uh, every time. It's trending towards zero in this case. So the rate of acceleration is changing. Uh, it's decreasing. So we can't use that because it doesn't have a constant change in rate of uh, velocity. What we do do to find the acceleration after five seconds is we go to five seconds and we look up here and then at this point we're going to draw a tangent here to the curve. Um, when we draw a tangent to this curve then you can figure out the gradient of that and for some reason it's just disappeared. Let's try that again. No, that's not going to work. Something like this. Okay, now this isn't a very great tangent. I'll just try and draw another one. You need to really try and make sure that the areas under the curve are fairly consistent. That's a little bit better. Uh, what I'm talking about is this area here and that area here need to be reasonably equal. So we'll go with this one just now. So the rise is equal to about three meters per second. The run is equal to, or oh, between, I'm going to go between two and seven, so that's five meters per second. So the acceler, it's five seconds, sorry, I should say. So the acceleration is the change in speed, change in velocity over time. So using this tangent to the curve and working out the gradient of that tangent gives us three divided by five. Uh, this gives us uh, an acceleration rate of 0 0.6 meters per second per second. So if you see a curve, uh, you can't work out from start to end. You need to draw a tangent to that line.